Welcome. This is the Tennessee end of course practice test for Algebra 1, test number 3, question number 45. Solve x squared plus 17x equals 16x plus 342 for x. Now, I know when I have to solve this kind of quadratic that I need to get everything on one side and zero on the other because the solution is easier to find for me if I can get it in a nice form that I can factor. So I'm going to write everything down in some sort of teal color, I guess or aqua, or whatever this is. It's one of the few times I want to get everything to one side, so I'm going to su subtract 16x, of course. These cancel, end up with x squared my, uh, plus x, and then on this side, 342. I'm going to subtract 342, leaving me nothing. And then a minus 342 over here. Obviously, they're not like terms, so I just put x squared plus x minus 342. Now, my goal at this point, since I uh, have this nice, you know, pretty looking setup, is to factor the 342. The bonus here for me is they give you the factors in the answers, because I don't want to do a factor list for 342, you divide by 2, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. It's either 38 and 9 or 19 and 18. So we're going to look for uh, that kind of relationship. One of the things I want to look at is in when I do my factoring is that second sign that I have right there. If that sign is negative, my answers, so this kind of thing, this is where we're going with it in case you were wondering, are going to be different. So since this is minus, it's going to be x plus and x minus. The plus that's in the first sign will tell me uh, which number of the factor set will go into uh, will go behind the positive. If this num this sign by the way were positive, I would know that both of these were the same sign, not necessarily negative. Uh, if so if this is plus and this is minus, it means they're both minus. If it's plus plus, they're both plus. It's just like a little uh, visual cue that you can use to make sure it's set up correctly. Now, I want a factor set that's going to be subtracted when the signs are different to give me positive 1. Sometimes I have people in my room circle this and then underline this and maybe put a 1 there. So I'm going to factor this to find something that will give me 1 and since they're different signs I'm going to subtract. So I'm just going to look at my answer choices um, and really these are just numbers that I can use so I know it's a 19 and 18 relationship I can't necessarily go by what signs are here because we have to find the solution later on so 19 I don't know why I was going to make a plus there 19 minus 18 does give me 1 18 minus 19 gives me negative 1 now I'm looking for positive 1 so I need to uh, use the set right here so in this case the 19 is behind the plus and the 18 is behind the minus that's it factored but it's set to zero. So I just need to solve the little bitty, you know, one step equations that are left over. So x plus 19 equals zero. It's really easy, by the way, to dive on the train here and say, oh, it's 19 and negative 18, because that's what's written in here. But you have to solve them and make sure you get the right answer. x is equal to 18, and x is equal to, I'm going to skip a little bit of the steppage here and x is equal to negative 19. So my answer to this one should be b. Now, you get into it and you're like, oh, that guy said that thing about that thing that kind of messed me up. So what else can I do to work through the problem a little bit? Um, the issue here is you can graph this once you get uh, the everything on one side. So instead of having it be uh, x squared plus 1x minus 342 equals 0, I can look at it graphically this being a y. So I'm going to bring up the old calculator here. Hopefully you have one. Otherwise this method doesn't work, so you might as well just move on to something else. So go into the calculator and turn it on, obviously, to y equals. Now I need to graph x squared plus 1x or plus x, it doesn't matter. It would help if you actually press the square button instead of just saying it. Apparently my calculator is in voice activated. And then minus 342. What I'm looking for when I'm talking about solution or my roots or whatever would be where it crosses the old x-axis. And it would also help if I changed the window so the zoom would work. I forgot. Um, if the answers are between 19 and 13, I might want to change my x maximum and x minimum values to something like, let's say, 40, 40. that whole thing. Now it should graph and I should be able to see it. There it is. 
So it's here and here. So I'm going to look for the points uh, that are located here. And there's many ways that you can sort of uh, make that happen if you so desire. I can actually start typing in the numbers as values into this. So let me erase every th all the stuff that was blocking me from being able to see my own problem. So I go to second, and I could go to calc. This is if you have a T84+. Plus. You can actually find the value. So I'm going to look based on my graph. Well, what does negative 38 mean? It should be uh, have a y value of 0 if it's one of the solutions and not even a little bit. So let's try one of our suspected answers, which would be negative 19. And it gives me 0. And does 18 also give me 0? Tension builds, I'm sure. Yep. And if you had tried uh, 19 and negative 18, it doesn't work. So those are your solutions. There's a cup. Uh, obviously, there's many, probably more ways that you can do this. But I tend to use factoring, or I like to use a graph, especially if the numbers are a little bit smaller than they are in this one. But uh, at least you have some methods that you can use to get the correct answer.